Blog Show. Blog Show. Welcome to the Blog Show. Grab your Cracker Jacks because you're in for 10 good minutes of sports blogging. I am King James Mottram. I'm joined, as always, by Daniel Booby Steinberg. Thank you, Jamie. We're going to flop our way through the seedy underbelly of the sports blogging world today. Every time we mention a sports blog or a sports blogger, we're going to give you one of these. Ding. Now, a couple weeks back, we played a band in Canada, Canada Television, a, a commercial of Frank Thomas pillow fighting with some children. Well, here's another one. It's a Rolling Rock commercial, courtesy of Fan IQ, banned from TV, but not blog show. The left-hander comes set, the pitch on the way. Anderson swings and lines one foul. Ricochets back and against Harbin. What's going on? Everybody's going down. Now the band. I've never seen anything like this. There goes my popcorn. Strike me. No! In the booth. In case you didn't notice, Dan, that was 33 shots to the nuts, courtesy of Rolling Rock, the whole 33 thing, except for those with cups. That's right. Although I usually like to drink, like, glasses, I think. I think beer is better in glass, personally. <laughs> Tasty. Yeah. Anyhow, I guess, speaking of groin-type videos, we've got another video that we saw on uh, Digital Headbutt, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is another video of, of kind of groin problems. I don't really understand what this has to do with sports at all. Maybe you could explain. Well, is it competitive uh, <laughs> weight pulling with the family <laughs> jewels? That's right. this is a good competition. That right. qualifies and then as sports. At the end, they start <laughs> kicking, kicking them, I guess, in an uncomfortable place. That kind of made me think maybe they should have had Tony Skin from George Mason help out with a little bit of <laughs> punching also. Your one liner's like a year old now. That happened in last year's tournament. It's a very famous groin shot. All right. Well, speaking of nuts, Gary Sheffield may or may not be crazy. I, don't, I actually like Sheffield. He just speaks his mind this week. He was speaking his mind in GQ, Gentleman's Quarterly Magazine. I am subscriber. We'll give a ding for them. Not a blog, though. <laughs> not a blog. Well, anyways, he had some quotes that made headlines. So our friends at 100% injury rate went back in time and found all the notable quotes from Sheffield. Yep. Uh, there's a few good ones. One of my favorite ones he was talking about, you know, faith. And his quote was, religion is an important thing as long as you worship the right God. That's right. I hope that I do. <laughs> And I, I mean, I also the famous quote back when he was with the Brewers, I guess, and he sort of said that if the you know, the official score gave him an error that he didn't agree with, to kind of get back at him next time, he would he would make it a definitive error by throwing the ball intentionally into the stands. And I think Matt Chico did a little bit of that this year. Well, I do actually like Sheffield for more so than just his quotes, but also his fashion sense. If you look at that 100% injury rate blog post closely, you'll see a beautiful 1989 Topps Future Stars card with his gold-plated two front teeth, a G and an S, both in gold, right across the front. Well, that's great. And speaking of, I guess, weird baseball stories, is that a good transition? Yes. The guys at Bugs and Cranks were doing some volunteer work for a local charity, and they went to, went to a baseball game and worked a concession stand. I've done that myself for my high school booster club back in the day at a Bills game. And I don't really have vivid memories of the experience, but these guys saw some very vivid stuff. For example, they were serving leftover hot dogs. That's disgusting. Like the uneaten hot dogs and sausages from the night before. From the night they, before. These guys were trained for like 10 minutes on how to cook these properly. Yeah. Basically, just had to reheat them and serve yesterday's hot dogs. That's right. And as they said so eloquently, if I'm going to eat ground pig anus, it had better be <laughs> the freshest pig anus available. And they also blasted Dipping Dots, the ice cream of the future. Dipping Dots came out in like 1991. So. So. I That's hate right. Dipping Dots. It's not the ice cream of the future, or at least not my future. Yeah. Soon enough, it'll be the ice cream of the past. Or speaking of Midwestern baseball, because they were doing that at Milwaukee's Miller Park, our good friends at JoeSportsFan.com, they, they spotted a fan at the uh, St. Louis Cardinals game with a distinct hairstyle. I've seen this before, but I never knew what it was called. It's right. where you you know, shave your, your sideburns on purpose above the ear line. Right. You know, as if you took your glasses there and just shaved straight up against them all the way down. Yeah, yeah well, they call these the neg burns right. for negative sideburns. Right. And I kind of have, I guess, the neg hairstyle on top. <laughs> yeah, more, more on that in a minute. Because speaking of crazy hairstyles, uh, Fan House's Tom Ziller took a unique approach to breaking down these NBA finals. He looked at Drew Gooden's uh, little, you know, uh, ducktail hair patch in That's the right. back of his head, and he gave it a whole new name, and I think this is brilliant. The neck stash. Yeah. Very good. And he compared it, the neck stash, to Manu Ginobili's bald spot. Now, I'll take the neck stash gladly, but you, as a proud, bald, handsome man, would you take Ginobili? Well, I guess the thing that I was trying to kind of compare, if you compare the two ha hairstyles, whether if you kind of removed the neck stash from uh, <laughs> Gooden and placed it on top of Manu, whether it would fill the hole there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Steins. We're getting a ding for the one-liners. All right, oh, in other NBA news, uh, our friend Jason Quick up at the, uh, is it the Oregon Live blog? Correct me if I'm wrong. That's right, affiliated yes. with the Oregonian. Yes, he noted that at the NBA pre-draft workouts that Kevin Durant couldn't bench press 185 pounds. Right. He did some actual reporting as opposed to basement blogging, and he got, he got all of the... Like, that's what you do. Well, he got all of the actual particulars for Odin versus 
versus Durant. Their you know their vertical jump, their mm -hmm. speed, and and the. I guess the the headline was the bench press. It was just shocking. Now, this made its way around the blogosphere because, I mean, most bloggers can bench press 185 pounds, and they're not going to get picked in the top two Besides in the NBA me, draft. Uh, our good friends at draftkevindurant.blogspot.com, very funny blog. They have accused Jason Quick of being a Soviet master of propaganda, saying that his findings are not on the level. Well, I think the interesting thing that the Draft Kevin Durant blog pointed out was that Greg Oden didn't even attempt the bench press. And so, and so I think their point was Odin benched zero pounds zero times, which is worse than benching 185 pounds zero times. What a wee girl. But then also our good friends, 100% injury rate. They noted all these famous people who are known to be able to bench press 185 pounds, including George W. Bush. The president can outbench Kevin Durant. He could do it five times, I think. Five times? That's right. That's not bad. And this made me all, uh, naturally think of Pat Robertson. Do you remember when he um, leg pressed the uh, 2,000 pounds once upon a time? <laughs> Pat Robertson leg pressed 2,000 pounds? That's, that's the, the rumor that Sounds I Sounds like an urban, urban myth. Also, our friends at 100% injury rate selling some t-shirts that we need to get our hands on. I bench more than Kevin Durant tees. That's right. And all this, all this talk about Pex is getting Joe Namath very excited. <laughs> get it? <laughs> that's not funny get it. at all. But moving on to a final NBA story, the hype guy, one of, one of our friends up in Canada. The hype guy. Com. Com kind of pointed out that there's a remarkable similarity between Stan Van Gundy, the newly hired coach of the Orlando Magic, and Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy, of course. That's a really unfortunate look-alike. That's true. Like you've said in the past, you look like certain people. Like who's the guy with the NBA who works at the draft? Deputy commissioner. Or something Deputy or other. commissioner. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, not sexy. Uh, but anyway, speaking of look-alikes, our good friends at Rival Fish, they did some logo look-alikes. Uh, you know, team logos versus you know famous people from around uh, the world of entertainment. There's the Georgetown Hoyas Bulldog, which looks very much like Ma Fratelli from Shockingly the Goonies. So. Shockingly That's so. That's an excellent look-alike. Yeah, I like the Columbus Crew and a few good men. I thought get a little MLS in there. Right, except I don't know who the hell is on this group. The Minnesota Viking and Hulk Hogan. Right. And this is I thought this one is inspired. The old Charlotte Hornet with the bug eyes and Mary Kate Olsen with the big bug eye sunglasses. I think I missed that one actually. Oh, it's brilliant. And if you want to see all of them, just head over to Rival Fish. Okay, and can we totally change gears for a second? Let's do it. We we showed a lot of kind of videos relating to balls earlier, and here's another one. This one from is from withleather.com and it's a, an exercise ball video. Awesome. <laughs> And that was our obligatory weekly video from our friends at withleather.com. And they are the purveyors of all things sexy in the sports blogosphere. But this is one bit of sexiness that they did not have the scoop on. This was an exclusive for SI.com's Extra Mustard. They had this uh, July cover of the July Playboy cover uh, on, on their website. And it's Amanda Beard, the Olympic medal winning swimmer, right. uh, with a inconveniently placed forearm across the chest. I don't know. This is all making me a little uncomfortable. Are you? I mean, we bit. talked about Allison Stokey last week, and, you know, she's had this, like, thrust upon her, you know, all these guys oogling her, googling her even. Uh, and Amanda Beard seeking it out, making a pretty penny. Yeah, I like the way you rhymed oogle and google. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But speaking of hot, we, we got our first tip into the old blog show inbox, which was cool. And this was from ladies dot dot dot. We talked about their hot blogger bracket earlier. They finally released the bracket. It's very hot kind of... Hot male sports blogger bracket. I'm sorry, hot male yeah. sports blogger. It's very kind of obscure. Obscure maybe is not the right word, but it's, I think there's more than 16 teams in some of the brackets. I was having trouble following, but I mean, it's a, it's a great document. And there's four number one seeds that we should probably mention. Uh, Will from Deadspin.com, Dan Shanoff from DanShanoff.com, Orson Swindle from Every Day Should Be Saturday, and Das Fanhouse, and some guy named Jay from Sports Gone South. I don't really know him. And where were you, Dan? I didn't enter. Nor did I. Yeah. But I'm sure we would have been one seeds, no doubt. Probably we would have a, Cinderella, a Cinderella pick at all. You know, I'm back in my guys at Fan House. They're, the men of Fan House have brought the sexy to ladies dot dot dot, uh -huh. this male blogger tournament. I'd just like to support Tom Mansoranis, Dave Warner, Pete Holiday, Brian Cook, and others, the men of Fan House. That's great television right there. I'd like to throw my support behind an 11 seed, Zach from the big picture. And I like his, his um, little kind of photo for this bracket. He's kind of hugging some other guys. That made me feel cool. That was very Brady Quinn-esque. And you know what? The big picture. He's been wanting a mention on Blog Show. He gets two. Okay, cool. And speaking of the email inbox that we've got, blogshow at comcastsportsnet.com, we also got some emails in from folks who've been playing the Blog Show drinking game. If you're out there listening, don't know what the Blog Show drinking game is, Google it. But here's a few pictures that we got. First up, Eli Manning. Yeah. Don't know if he's been playing the drinking game or if the shutter just caught him in between blinks there. Uh, you've got Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that photo, uh, he's been playing it for years because that photo has been around the <laughs> inner true. tubes. And here's my favorite one. I mean, goodness gracious, it's Jimmy Johnson. Right. Old man playing the blog show drinking game. Not the NASCAR Jimmy Johnson. He probably no. plays too, but we no. don't have the Fox Sports commentator. Yet. You know, Super Bowl winning coach. Yeah, Jimmy anyhow, Johnson. if you play the blog show drinking game this week and you want to send us a a picture of it, I guess go ahead. I can't remember what that email address is, but hopefully it's flashing on the screen right now. <laughs> it's blogshow at comcastsportsnet.com. Cool. I've committed it to memory. Awesome. 
Is that it? <laughs> well, I mean, that's it, except for the artisanal cheese of the week. You were saying before the show that you might not have one. You ran out of yeah, cheese. Yeah, but cheese of the week, I've never actually, I've never actually tried this one. But it was the grand prize Puba winner of the 2006 American Cheese Society Awards. It's the Cabot cloth wrapped farmstead cheddar of some sort. I'm sure it's awesome, but my cheese budget is totally running out now. That sounds good. We'll have some after the show. This does it for blog show number 12. It always does it after you've done the cheese because that's when we've totally run out of air. But before you go, I'm going to play you the YouTube clip of the week. This one comes via wearethepostman.com. It is a play on the old Mike Tyson's Punch-Out Nintendo video game. But instead of Mike Tyson and Little Mac, it's Michael Jackson and Macaulay Culkin. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Look show wardrobe provided by needforsheet.com and freedarko.blogspot.com. 